today we are going to discuss about spectral intensity of radiation i lambda e and its relation to emission that is e lambda so spectral intensity of radiation and its relation to e lambda so just focus on the topic consider the rate at at which the emission from area da1 passes through area dan so you have to refer to this particular diagram here here you can see this is the area da1 and the emission is taking place in this particular direction so this is the emitted radiations and this is area dan through which these radiations are leaving and this cone is making an angle d omega at the center of this area d a1 this quantity is expressed in terms of spectral intensity i lambda e e basically stands for emission and lambda stands for the spectral and i stands for intensity so spectral can also be said as monochromatic so this is i lambda e is spectral intensity of the emitted radiations now let us go to the definition of spectral intensity of radiation i lambda e it is defined as the rate at which radiant energy is emitted at the wavelength lambda in the theta phi direction so you can see here in this diagram that this energy is emitted in the direction theta if you take the zenith angle and if you take the azimuthal angle this energy is being emitted at an angle phi so the direction is theta phi so once again i am reading the definition it is defined as the rate at which the radiant energy is emitted at the wavelength lambda in the theta phi direction now per unit area of the emitting surface normal to this direction so which one is the emitting surface this is the emitting surface so we have to take this area in a direction normal to the area da n actually per unit solid angle about this direction and we also have to consider per unit solid angle which is shown here and per unit wavelength interval d lambda about lambda so just see this equation here which will be easier for you to understand i lambda e what is this i lambda e it is spectral intensity of radiation it is equal to energy emitted now what is the energy emitted this is the emitted radiations or the energy emitted per unit of the emitting surface normal to the direction so here we have said this is the projected area per unit of the wavelength this is the wavelength and per unit of the solid angle so this is how we get the definition of the spectral intensity of radiation rather we should call it as the directional spectral intensity of the radiation because we are also talking about the direction in which the emission is taking place from the area da1 so it's not only the spectral intensity of radiation rather it is the directional spectral intensity of radiation now once again the same equation is written here what is i lambda e energy emitted per unit of the projected area per unit of the wavelength per unit of the solid angle so three things we have divided the energy emitted now we have to calculate the area first of all let us calculate the projected area of da1 we want to calculate the projected area of da1 so this da1 if i consider that this da1 is connected to this normal direction and if i move this by angle theta then this area will also move by an angle theta so it would be something like this so it means if i have to calculate the projected area of da1 this angle will be theta and this projected area will be given by da1 cos theta so this is the normal direction and this is this direction is actually parallel to this area dan or you can see it here also here we are seeing this is the direction of the eye and this is the area da1 if i am taking to making uh, this area to make an angle of theta then this will be equal to shown here this area will be equal to da1 cos theta then we can calculate the value of d omega what is d omega d omega is the solid angle and we have already discussed about it in the previous lecture so d omega is given by sin theta d theta d phi 
so spectral intensity of radiation which has the units of watt per meter square st radian micrometer is then given by i lambda theta phi so this is showing the dependence of spectral intensity of emitted radiations on lambda theta and phi so dq is the energy emitted so you can see here this and uh, emitted radiation is given by the name dq divided by the projected area da1 cos theta this is the solid angle and this is d lambda so when we divide this dq by this d lambda we call this quantity as dq lambda and what is this dq lambda dq lambda is the rate at which the radiation of the wavelength lambda leaves da1 and passes through dan so what we can do we can rearrange this equation and it follows that so basically now i have calculated the value of this quantity dq lambda so dq lambda will be given by i lambda e multiplied by da1 cos theta multiplied by d omega so this is the value of dq lambda so once again it is the same equation dq lambda is given by i lambda e which is uh, dependent upon lambda theta and phi multiplied by the projected area da1 cos theta into solid angle now we know that the solid angle as uh, is, uh, told to you that it is given by sin theta d theta d phi so dq lambda becomes i lambda e da1 cos theta and here we have put the value of d omega which is sin theta d theta d phi now what is the unit of dq lambda dq lambda has the unit of watt per micrometer because dq lambda is the energy emitted per unit of the wavelength so this is the important expression which allows us to compute the rate at which radiation is emitted by a surface and propagates into the region of space defined by the solid angle d omega about the direction theta phi expressing spectral emission dq lambda per unit area of the emitting surface the spectral radiation flux dq lambda double dash associated with da1 is then given by so basically it is nothing but we are calculating the spectral uh, spectral radiation flux basically which is equal to uh, dq lambda divided by da1 so you can see it when we divide dq lambda by da1 then we get so you can refer to this particular equation we have brought this quantity in the denominator on the left hand side so we are left with i lambda e functional relationship of lambda theta and phi cos theta sin theta d theta d phi so this is the value of the spectral radiation flux now we are going to discuss about the spectral hemispherical emissive power now what is the total emissive power which is being emitted by this surface area da1 that is we are interested to calculate and uh, when we say hemispherical it means in all directions and when we say spectral spectral means in a particular wavelength range only so that is what we are interested in calculating in this particular case so the spectral hemispherical emissive power e lambda given by the units watt per meter square micrometer why micrometer comes into picture is because we are talking about a particular wavelength or because it is a spectral quantity is the rate at which the radiation leaves wavelength lambda which is emitted in all directions from a surface per unit wavelength interval d lambda about lambda and per unit surface area now you see it here so we are talking about per unit surface area and per unit uh, Uh, wavelength interval because now we are not worried about the di uh, direction actually and when we say hemispherical it means all directions so that is why the theta and phi is not uh, coming into picture in this particular case thus e lambda is the spectral heat flux associated with the emission into a hypothetical hemisphere hemisphere above da1 as shown in the figure and it is given by the expression now this what is this e lambda as a function of lambda it is nothing but it is the radiant energy flux which we have just calculated in the previous case and the equation was i lambda e lambda theta phi cos theta sin theta d theta d phi now 
because now we are interested in calculating this quantity for the whole uh, in all directions. So we have to integrate it for theta varying between 0 to pi by 2 and phi varying between 0 to 2 pi. And when we take theta varying between 0 to pi by 2 and phi varying between 0 to 2 pi, then we can see that the emission is in the hemisphere, which is uh, shown here in this diagram. This is the area DA1 and this hemisphere, you can see the theta value is given by uh, 0 to pi by 2 and phi is taken into consideration from varying between 0 to 2 pi. So this will make this strip, this will make this strip into the total hemisphere. And that is how we calculate the value of the spectral hemispherical emissive power. Now there is one important thing here. Note that E lambda is a flux based on the actual surface area. Because here we are taking the actual surface area, whereas I lambda E is based on the projected area. The cos theta term appearing in the integrand is a consequence of this difference only. So you can see this cos theta is coming into picture because we are taking the projected area when we are calculating the value of when we are considering the value of I lambda E. So that is why the cos theta comes into picture. So then once again I have written the same equation E lambda as a function of lambda is equal to spectral uh, radiant flux which is given by Q lambda double dash and it is equal to I lambda dependence on lambda theta and phi cos theta sin theta d theta d phi theta varying between 0 to pi by 2 and phi varying between 0 to 2 pi. And if we want to calculate the total hemispherical emissive power. So when I say hemispherical, it means I am talking about uh, all directions. When I say total, I am talking about all wavelengths actually. So that is what I am uh, interested in calculating. So it is the rate at which the radiation is emitted per unit area at all possible wavelengths and in all possible directions. So what I have to do to calculate the value of uh, E or the total hemispherical emissive power, what I will do, I have this quantity E lambda, which is having a functional relationship of lambda. So I will integrate it with respect to dy and I can uh, take the value of lambda varying between 0 to lambda varying to infinity. So that will cover the whole wavelength range. So in this manner, I can calculate the total hemispherical emissive power. And sometimes I will just call it as the emissive power only. When I call it as the emissive power, it automatically means it is the total hemispherical emissive power. So you can see this, this was the equation which gives us the value of E lambda as a function of lambda. So when I have to calculate this value of E, so I have to include this one more integration sign here, zero to lambda, other things remaining same as given in the equation 12.8. So just now in this uh, small lecture, we have discussed about two things. First of all, we discussed about the spectral intensity of radiation and also calculated its radiation to the, uh, its relation to the emission E lambda. So once again, you can see it here. This is the emitted uh, energy divided by projected area, wavelength and solid angle. And this is known as the spectral intensity of radiation. Once again, to remind you, because we are considering a particular direction here, we can also call it as the uh, directional spectral intensity of radiation. Or we can say that spectral intensity of radiation is already a function of theta and phi. And the finally, when we get, get the value of the uh, d q lambda, which is the spectral energy leaving uh, in a particular direction that would be given by I lambda E. So I lambda is once again spectral intensity of radiation. So when I have to calculate the energy leaving uh, at a particular wavelength, then I have to take this spectral intensity of uh, radiation multiplied by the normal surface area d a 1 cos theta into d omega and d omega is given by sin theta d theta d phi and then we can calculate the value of the radiant spectral radiation flux which is given by dq lambda by da1 and then we have calculated the spectral hemispherical emissive power e lambda and you can see here this is the equation for the 
total hemispherical emissive power and this is the equation for the spectral hemispherical emissive power E lambda. So for uh, today this uh, lecture is sufficient.